Microsoft Excel is one of Microsoft's most versatile Office applications. Because Excel has so many capabilities, keyboard shortcuts have been created to enable faster access to popular features. Now let's check out part three of Excel's greatest keyboard shortcuts for increasing productivity and saving time. When you need to hide or display information, and those needs switch back and forth on a regular basis, it's a lot easier to create what are called groups. This then gives you buttons that you can click to hide or show specific ranges of rows or columns. On the Data tab in the upper right-hand corner is the Group and Ungroup button. This is not a particularly difficult operation, but if you have a lot of groups to create, this can get quite click intensive. A way around this is to use the shift key, the alt key, and either the right arrow to create a group or the left arrow to remove a group. If I were to select January through quarter four and perform a shift alt right arrow, I can create a group for that entire year. This way, if I don't need to see all the monthly quarterly details, one click and I can hide them. One click and I can bring them back. I could select the first three months and do a shift alt right and create the Q1 group. Same thing for the Q2 group, then the Q3 group, and then the Q4 group. If you need to dissolve a group, you can highlight each item that is a member of a group and perform a shift alt left arrow. Now to make this process even easier, we can use another keyboard shortcut, the F4 key. The F4 key's job is to repeat the last operation performed. So if we have to create groups for each of the quarters, I could select January, February, March, perform a shift alt right arrow. But since that was the last used operation, I can now highlight FGH for the second quarter and just press F4. And the F4 will perform the last used operation, which was the shift alt right arrow. I can highlight JKL, F4, and then NOP, F4. This next keyboard shortcut is one that very few Excel users know even exist. When you're using the grouping and outlining controls, and you have the plus minus buttons there to help you craft your story, you might find that using the plus minus buttons, you craft your story, but then you want this report to stay the way it is and you don't want people to change the way you filtered this data. Well, the one, two buttons and the plus minus buttons on the screen just cry out for people to click them, which would then change your story. To hide those controls, hold down the control key and then on the number across the top of your keyboard, not the numbers on the numeric keypad, press the number eight. This will hide all of the grouping and outlining controls. If you need to recraft your story, just press control and the number eight key, bring those controls back, change your story, and then control eight to rehide them. If you work with name ranges, you know the value of being able to use a name in a formula as opposed to a more cryptic traditional cell reference. But when you have a lot of named ranges, it can become difficult to remember exactly what you called what in your named range library. To help with this, we can use the F3 key to display a list of all the named ranges in the file. So for example, to calculate the monthly payment, I've named these particular arguments, loan, rate, years, pay year, interest per payment, and total payment. When I write my PMT function, I can press the F3 key, pull up a list of named ranges, and then I can choose from that list the named range I wish to use. So in this case, interest per payment. For the next argument, I'll hit F3, and this one I'm going to choose total payment. And then finally, for the third argument, I'll type in a minus sign, hit F3, and I'll choose loan. Pressing enter reveals my answer. So you can see in the formula, it's much nicer to look at named ranges than traditional cell references, but sometimes these named ranges may be difficult to remember. Here's a bonus. If you wish to create a documented list of all your named ranges and what those named ranges are referring to, click a cell in your spreadsheet, press F3 to reveal the list of named ranges, then click the button that says paste list. This will produce a list of all named ranges and exactly what sheet and what cell those named ranges are pointing to. One of my most favorite set of keyboard shortcuts that I've discovered most people don't even know exist is the keyboard shortcut to insert or delete single or multiple rows or columns. So if you're in front of a group of people and you wanna stop the show, select a column heading and then hold down control and on the number keypad, hit the plus button. This will insert a new column at that position. If you repeatedly hit the plus button, you can insert several columns very quickly. To remove a column, press control minus button on the number keypad. 
and of course repeatedly pressing the minus button will repeatedly remove those columns. You could do the same thing by selecting a row and pressing Control plus or Control minus If you select a series of columns and press Control plus you'll be given as many columns as you've selected. Or if you select a series of columns and press Control minus then you can delete that many columns. Same thing for rows. If you select a series of rows and press Control plus then you'll receive that many rows. If you press Control minus then you'll remove that many rows. When you need to select data, placing your cursor in a cell and then holding down Control and pressing Space will select the entire column. If you hold down Shift and hit Space, you'll select an entire row. If you highlight a series of cells that cross rows and perform a Shift Space, you'll select all of the selected rows. Same thing for selecting multiple columns, Control Space will select all of those columns. And our last trick, how to hide single or multiple rows or columns. If you place your cursor in a cell and hold down Control and hit the number 9, that will hide the selected row. If you hold down Control and press the number 0, that will hide the selected column. Note, I'm using the 9 and 0 keys across the top of the keyboard, not from the number keypad. If you select multiple columns and press Control 0, you'll hide all selected columns. If you select multiple rows and press Control 9, you'll hide multiple rows. So those are the most used or most mysterious keyboard shortcuts in Excel. If you know of a keyboard shortcut that I didn't mention and you think it will improve other Excel users' lives, please let us know what that shortcut is in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.